Hello, everybody. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Can you hear me? Who's talking? Mary. Yeah, I can hear you, Mary. Just testing out this computer to see if it'll work for me. It's working great. I just need to figure out where all the controls are. Robin's here. I don't know who Misha is. And we have a Sandra's iPad. I don't know who Sandra is. Uh, good evening. This is Nick Yarmack, 18 Wyola Drive. On Hi. Samantha. On... Is that Sandra's? Can I rename you? Certainly. So give me, hold on, Nick, you said? Yeah, Nick Yarmack, Y-A-R-M-A-C. Okay, thank you. And thank Nisha, you. Uh, can thank you identify you. yourself? I think their microphone is muted. Hmm. Is, can you hear my voice on your uh, Darren too? Yes. Hi, Joe. I didn't know if it was coming through or not. That's all. put my uh, video on a minute I'm wolfing down a snack okay we still have a few people who are not identified herons could you identify yourselves hi this is David Green Hi. Uh, Elwack. Oh, hi, David. Can I rename you? You're here. Yeah, you're at Karen's. yeah I, I don't, I never understand why it comes up that way. Hi, Barry. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We're still waiting um, for S Scott. We don't have Scott. I don't know if Janice will be here tonight. We'll, get, we'll wait them one more minute and then we'll call the meeting. Um, Beth, you're going to be taking minutes. Is that right? <laughs> you volunteered last time. I did. Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, sure. Great. Okay. Let's start doing that. All right. Um, here comes Scott. So Scott signing in. Good. Somebody is identified as meeting host and it's not me. Who are you meeting host? <laughs> it, it's not me, is it? No, somebody probably <laughs> who, who is on a town board and has signed in as a meeting host. Is that Henry Geddes? Uh, no, no, it's uh, Mark Rivers here. Uh, oh, Mark. Can I'll I rename I will to rename myself. Okay, or I can do it. Okay. okay. You're you're renamed. All right. 
It is 701. Let's call the meeting to order. Um, we've got a bunch of things we need to talk about. Some of them are going to be a little time consuming. So um, for people who are here because you have a project and you're on the agenda, please just uh, bear with us because uh, we may we may jump around a little bit. Um, let's start with considering the minutes um, for September 23rd. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? Uh, yes. Yes. So we revised them. I went back and looked because there were two missing votes. So I looked at the recording and that's why there's a second version I sent out. Yeah. It's Somebody fine wanted, to me. Everybody, Scott. Looks good to me and make a motion to accept the revised minutes. Okay, this is Mary. Mary, second. I'll second. Second. Mary, okay, Miriam seconds. Okay, David. Aye. Font, aye. Harrington? Aye. Khan? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Okay, then we've got the minutes from the 14th. Two okay. super minor things that I noticed. That okay, let me pull my, my draft up. Go ahead. Um, on the very top of the first page where it lists others present, yeah. it lists Janice twice. And I know she's super important. <laughs> it's got her name twice. <laughs> it no, does I it? Where, I, well, I'm not seeing that. Maybe I already took it out. <laughs> oh, and the one that I printed out this afternoon, it's there. Okay. Yeah, it's, on, it's on mine too. I see one. Oh, yeah. Okay. I also, <laughs> there are some people who are whose last names are not listed. I don't know who they are. That's why um, it's really good for the minute taker. If you're here and you're signed in and your last name isn't evident, if you could just unmute yourself and identify yourself, that would be very helpful. We have one person on the Zoom who has not done that. Um, okay. And so the only I other minor thing I noticed that I almost don't want to mention because I think it's kind of funny no. is the very last thing on the very end of the minutes where it lists documents used. It yeah. says the site visit form for Ames Haven Toad. <laughs> uh, kind of like that, but. I do like that. Okay. All right, thanks. Any other changes? No. Okay. So um, I move that we accept the uh, October 14th minutes as amended. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, David. Aye. 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 Um, Aye. And Wilson. Aye. Okay, very good. Thank you with that. So, um, music. Sorry, I had to close the door. My husband's starting to practice his accordion, so I don't want to hear that. Um, let's go through some of our site visit follow ups. Um, and I know that we've got somebody here, Willa Jarnagan from 105 West Pelham Road is here. Um, so perhaps we can talk about that first um, to, res to so that you don't have to stay on the meeting. So this was a situation where the landowners contacted us um, voluntarily saying that they were planning to uh, uh, pave their driveway and they wanted to know if they needed a wetlands permit and I suggested that we do a preliminary site visit to see whether or not that would be required because a building permit would not ordinarily be required for paving a gravel a pre-existing gravel driveway um, so it wouldn't come through us as a building permit so for approval so um, Beth Wilson and I went out and Beth do you want to mention a little bit what you saw Sure. Um, it's sort of a steep driveway coming down off of West Pelham um, down to where the house is. And as Miriam said, it's gravel. Um, and then the driveway sort of ends at the house into a little parking area. Um, and behind the house and sort of around the house, um, there was definitely wetland indicator plants. There was a, a lot of jewel weed, especially. Um, so you know, I feel like that area definitely could be considered a wetland and that 
should be protected during construction. And then also, we just want to make sure again, it, it just looks like drainage is going to be um, definitely a concern because of the slope. And so I think we just want to make sure that the design for the paving and the drainage that that is proposed, there is there is some design um, with it that it deals well enough with all the water that could come down there. Yeah. So um, they've had a lot of flooding problems uh, because it's a steep driveway and their house is directly at the bottom of the driveway and it's it's um, set down a little bit great a little below grade. I think the the um, first floor door is a little bit below grade. You step down to get to the door. Is that right? Um, not flooding. We've really never had any standing water or flooding ever. Okay. Um, it's simply that it, it that we do get some mud coming down our steps, yeah. Yeah. but mainly it's the, it's the quality of the driveway and that it's, it's hard to walk on um, and so on. So we have to make a decision and the decision, and then that will sort of guide what we do next. So the decision is, do, are we delineating a resource area? If we identify a resource area, then the homeowners would need to submit a request for determination of applicability. And then we would, you know, review it and um, provide conditions possibly for how they can do the driveway and um, stabilize the erosion issues. If we don't find that it's a, a resource area, we can make general recommendations, but they wouldn't be binding, um, but you know, it would be best practices. So, um, you know, this is, the, this is the quandary. Um, and I would say if we're, if it's a question, we can also schedule another site visit with more commissioners. We don't have to, if we feel like we don't have enough information to make that decision and we want to do a second site visit and, you know, maybe look at the soils a little bit more thoroughly, we could, um, you know, check for hydric soils as well um, for guidance besides the plants. Certainly so what did you well. and Beth, do you and Beth think that it is? Well, I agree with Beth that um, we saw a large quantity of what's considered to be facultative wet plants, which I think by definition means about 80% of the time, I don't know how you read it, 80% of the time it's found in wetlands, but sometimes found in upland areas. Is that, isn't that how facultative wet is? Right, and then if, if you have over 50%, of the wetland plants and that's one of the qualifications for for being a wetland right also, it, was uh, it was it was predominant it was a large patch of it it wasn't it was a dominant plant um but the hydrology that's out there is you are you seeing standing water uh, no we are not oh sorry i didn't know did you mean me a anybody can answer that where was there no um, you. <laughs> yeah, um, we do not have standing water. We never have um, no flooding, no uh, standing water. Um, and my husband wants me to mention that we have a lot of riprap built in the plan to, do erosion <coughs> to slow down any water flow. So I just wanted to mention that as well. But we no, we have not had a standing water problem at all ever. It's a, John, so it is a very steep, it's very steep right at the road. And then it is a little less steep as you get towards the house. And the whole area slopes north. It's sloping downhill to the north, um, a general north condition direction. And off to the, let me if you're in the north, to the west, there's kind of a low lying area that's maybe 50 feet away, um, maybe 75 feet away. Um, that's even lower than the slope that we're talking about. It's not like a little divot, linear divot. Um, so I, I feel like I, I, I don't know that I have a clear sense. I guess I'm going to defer to Beth, um, in this a little bit, Beth, <laughs> and it, you know, if you feel like, you know, enough that have enough information to make a determination, um, or if you think more information would be helpful. I think more information would be helpful. I think maybe another site visit by other commissioners, because the choice is either we kind of decide 
on our own as a group, whether it is, or um, having the applicant hire somebody to figure out to determine whether or not it is. And that's always a burden for the applicant. Um, so I guess I feel like I feel like we should make the decision because I, I do feel like that area might need some protection from the project. Um, so maybe another site visit so that we can all decide together whether or not we consider it a wetland and want to. And then also, um, I'm wondering if, if people have looked at the plan that they submitted and have looked at the drainage controls and stuff like that. Well, maybe we shouldn't even get into that at this point because we have to decide whether we have jurisdiction or not. I mean, for us to be discussing it before we have decided that we have jurisdiction, I think is important because if we make recommendations and we don't have jurisdiction, it's important for the applicant to know that. Right. Um, because- I think you're gonna need to dig some holes in that soil. Yes. Before you can make that decision. I think I agree. I have an auger. I have a little, soil sampling auger that All I right. can go dig. So um, to Willa, and I'm sorry, I've forgotten your husband's name or your partner's name. It's Eric. Eric, thank you. Um, is it also the same last name? Uh, no, we have different last names. What's his last name? Malone. Okay. With two L's or one L? One. Okay. Um, so we, I will get back to you and we will set up a site visit with you with more people and our auger so we can dig some holes. Yes. May I ask a question or make a few points? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I, uh, we are really, really anxious to proceed with the pre uh, paving this fall because one of the primary reasons is that I have a disability and I have trouble with our driveway. We could not afford to pave the driveway last year um, I reached out to the town in September thinking that was early, apparently maybe not, but um, I'm a little frantic right now to be able to proceed this fall with this project. Do you know how long will it take to do these extra steps? Is there any way we can, um, I hate to ask, but can they be expedited? I'm just, I'm really well, anxious that we're not gonna be yeah, able to- I, I appreciate that. And I'm, I, we certainly wanna do this as quickly as we possibly can. We understand that. This, we, you know, because we've heard this from other people as well around the season and, you know, time is closed, windows closing for getting projects done. Yeah. We can do the site visit this coming week. We meet on the 11th. So we would not be able to make a decision until the 11th. Um, may I ask, is it all right if the contractor um, begins the scheduling process and um, begins to organize and schedule concurrently with this process of approval? He can, but you should just understand that if we decide that you need a request for determination of applicability, then you have to post, um, you have to submit an application, um, you have to post um, notices to a butters, and then we would review it at our next meeting, which I don't think is till the first week in December. Because we are, we usually meet on Two, twice in November, but Thanksgiving is falling on Thursday. So right now we don't have a second meeting scheduled in November, though maybe maybe we'll decide to have one, but that's up to the commission. But um, um, is Mark, there any, I'm, sorry. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Is there any other, is there any, I, it truly is a struggle for me to deal with our driveway. Um, I, I, hear I did reach out in September to the town. Is there any other way, is there anything I can do? Is there any, because this is really a hardship for me. I, I truly, it's I just, I, we, our hands are tied. We have to go through this process. Um, I mean, we could say if this would make it faster, we, I mean, perhaps the commission would vote tonight based on the data to, determine that it is a wetland and then require an RDA and then you, but you would still have to get the RDA. And I think it, you wouldn't have enough time for our November 11th meeting. Um, because so we're probably gonna have to do it next year, an entire no. year from now, no. because we have some wetland plants. Um, I guess I ask you, is, is there any other way, um, you know, we came to you voluntarily in good faith, and um, I really did not expect this. Is there anything we can do? Miriam? Do you think she couldn't do Janice? a- Janice? Janice? 
Uh -huh. um, I was just wondering as another way, could they, I don't know if they'd be able to find someone in time, but if they could get someone like Ward Smith to come out and take a look and to make a determination without the request for determination, but if he says it's, it's not wetland, then at least that might move things forward. You guys can still look at it, but maybe to have um, a professional wetland person, if they can get one, go out there and um, make some kind of determination about it. It might help speed up the process. Thank but you. But we would still have to meet, we'd still have to meet to talk about it on the 11th. Uh-huh, yeah. And then I, 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 I'm getting the sense that that is too late for you, Willa. The 11th of November? Yeah. Um, if the paving company could be planning in the meantime, um, that might be okay, but how would I go about hiring this consultant? Well, you, you know, I, I, I don't know that we should be recommending a particular right. consultant because, you know, we're not in the business of giving other people business. Um, but there are people who are environmental consultants who are wetland scientists who you people hire for projects and they can go out and give an opinion. I, I you know, we still have to do our due diligence and we probably have to go back out anyway. So um, I'm not sure hiring somebody is gonna help unless you disagree with what we come up with, in which case maybe it would help. Um, well, uh, um, we have a question about digging in the soil. Our soil is very rocky. Um, you can't really dig a hole without hitting rocks. It's hard to dig a hole without hitting rocks. You, you want to answer that, Beth? Um, so the, the auger that you use when you're doing wetland delineation, the diameter is like an inch and a half. It's a very small, it's like a, just a little rod that you shove down to and, and pull up, after, get down about 20 inches and pull up and look at the soil. So I think we'll be able to get around the rocks just to get a couple soil samples. Um, it's true that if you get, if you go 20 inches into our soil, you get a lot of rocks, but um, maybe that's not germane. Okay. All right. I think we need to move on. Um, I'll reach out to you guys um, about setting up a site visit. <coughs> um, we'll put this on our agenda for the 11th. And um, we'll go from there. All right, I think we need to move on. Um, we have the 24 Lake Drive um, RDA. Now we have the RDA scheduled for the 11th. So we don't have to go over the site visit today. Uh, we could just save it for when we meet on the 11th. Do you wanna do that? Sure. Okay. While we're on Lake Drive, I'm gonna jump around a little bit um, to a different agenda item because um, it's a lot. When Beth and I were walking over to this property, uh, which is a driveway paving project, we walked by two, two addresses where the Conservation Commission issued order of conditions for a notice of intent for new houses. This was at 26 Lake Drive and at 32 Lake Drive. And Beth and I were concerned because the erosion controls were in pretty soggy, sad shape. Um, uh, they just were not functional any longer after a season and all the construction. So I reached out to the landowners for both houses and um, asked them to uh, update them. And they both did that and sent me photographs. I could locate them if you wanna see them, but it looks to me like they spruced it up pretty well put in new erosion socks and, and, the, and the like. So I don't think we need any other action, do we? Okay. Great. Okay, that was, that was <laughs> easy and easy thing. Um, we had a site visit for the Randall boat launch. Um, this is with the DFW. Um, Doug Cameron and Mark Rivers was there and Lee, uh, Mary was there and also um, somebody else from LWAC, I'm forgetting his name. John Gorey. John Gorey, thank you. Um, so we walked around and Doug explained a little bit about what the layout might be, what they were thinking about. They don't have a site design yet. 
And we talked about parking for dual use, including recreational use in the um, conservation area and where that might fit. Um, and we did communicate that the Conservation Commission has an interest in making sure there's access and parking to the conservation area um, since we're already undertaking a CPA project at the town's expense to upgrade the signage and the maps and the trails. So we left it that he was going, Doug Cameron's gonna drop a rough design layout for us to look at. And then we would schedule another follow-up site visit with the whole commission to come out and take a look at it when we have something in hand. I think it's easier if we can just um, see what they're talking about. The one thing that he did say, which I just want to share with the commission is that um, I was talking a little bit about congestion in the parking area and what happens if um, the improvements, the capital improvements and hosting the website on the, the launch site on the state's website might increase the number of people coming from out of area. And he said that that has been a problem statewide um, where people are parking illegally um, and not abiding by the sign rules and to the point where they have a task force, a statewide task force to look at enforcement issues wow. and have um, had focused targeted <clears throat> enforcement at different sites where they've gone in and ticketed people. And apparently that's cut down on the infractions, but then they kind of come back after a while. And he said that the enforcement would be managed jointly by our local police, by the state police and the environmental police, but it would be our local police who would be sort of the eyes and ears on the ground more likely to be monitoring. Um, one thing I also just wanted to share about the Randall boat launch is um, just, I think that we need to clarify with the select board who has the authority to approve this project because my understanding is that the Randall Road boat launch falls under this um, the town beach conservation area, which is under Conservation Commission supervision. So um, I believe that it is our authority to um, approve that project. Um, I think that's a good point to, to get that clarified. I mean, it was a self-help project. I guess we'd have to look maybe at the paperwork when the deed went through for that to oh, see what that's, it says. That's a really good point, Anna. So guess what I have right here? Oh, excellent. I have the management plan <laughs> oh, yes. for the conservation area. I went and dug through the files today. <laughs> um, and I have scanned it and I'm gonna email it to everybody. Oh, good. Um, which brings me to the second issue, which is again, a little out of order, but it's sort of uh, conceptually related to Southbrook. Um, as you recall, we put up the signage um, at Southbrook to uh, discourage people driving on the hiking trails. And um, the highway department had initially agreed to put a boulder up to block the entrance on Locks Pond Road. And then I got an email earlier this week from the highway department saying that they had been told by the town administrator that they were not allowed to do that because the town would need a bylaw to post the land. What? So um, I did a little research by picking up this conservation plan and I've drafted a letter to respond to that. I did email the town administrator and asked her and the town attorney to clarify this and I did not get a response. So I thought, okay, maybe a letter is an order. So I have written a letter, I'm happy to screen share it or I can read it to you guys. Um, but um, in the management plan dated 2001, um, for both of the conservation areas, it says very clearly the Conservation Commission has the authority to develop policies and to oversee the management and maintenance of the properties and how they're used. Good. And nobody else has the authority. It's very clearly the Conservation Commission. 
Yeah, I've never heard that before, that you needed a bylaw to post your land against uh, vehicles. That's ridiculous. But I, I, so I've written a letter. How would you guys like me to, I would like to get the commission's input on this and whether to send it. Um, would you like me to read it? Would that be easier? Or do you want me to screen share it? I just want to hear it or see it or something. Thank okay. you so much for doing this. Okay. So dear select board, I'm writing on two unrelated issues related to the South Brook Conservation Area. At the couple of the select board meetings recently, there was discussion about the proposed DFW boat launch project at the town boat launch. There was some discussion about who has the authority to approve this project. With that in mind, and to refresh everyone's memory, I'm attaching the town beach and South Brook Conservation Areas Management Plan. The plan executed in 2001 indicates that the Conservation Commission has the authority to set policy and oversee maintenance and management issues for the two joint areas, which include the boat launch and the parking area. I hope this is helpful, and I trust that any MOU for this project would be contingent upon Conservation Commission prior approval. I was yes, no, maybe. Yeah. Good to me. Then we go on on a different subject. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking in the conservation area on 1014 and discovered a man in a truck driving down a footpath. He identified himself as a commercial mountain laurel harvester and claimed to have been using the footpath to access private land for some time. I observed that his truck was badly damaging the trail and wetlands. After identifying myself and asking him to leave, he refused and said he could remain because the land was not posted. The situation was quite surprising and concerning. <laughs> At the uh, October 14th Conservation Commission meeting, the commission voted to disallow all unauthorized motor vehicles in the area, except for snowmobiles. I was tasked with arranging for posting signs to the entrances and to ask the highway department to put a boulder blocking motor vehicle access to the foot trail off of Locks Pond Road. Tim Hunting indicated that his department would do it in the next few weeks. I also spoke with acting Chief Burgess, who contacted the individual. She learned that he does not possess a legal license to harvest mountain laurel commercially, and he acknowledged to her that he has knowingly harvested from the Southbrook Conservation Area directly in the past. <coughs> Any comments about that? <laughs> um, he agreed to not do it anymore. Um, after hearing back from Acting Chief Burgess, I shared this information with Becky Torres to keep her informed of the plan. Yesterday, Tim Hunting informed me by email that his department could not place the boulder as planned on the advice of town administrator. He indicated that the access could not be restricted because there's no town bylaw restricting access to that property. From my reading the management plan of the management plan, um, it appears that the Conservation Commission does, in fact, have the authority to set policies and take appropriate actions to protect habitat in a manner consistent with the goals of preserving wetlands, wildlife habitat, and passive recreational use of the property. In looking at the state laws regarding land use and posting, I have also been unable to find any indication that towns must have a specific bylaw to post properties or regulate their uses. If anything, the approval of this conservation area and its management plan by town meeting and the select board seems like sufficient authority to take appropriate actions. Um, given the recent situation in some, which someone knowingly misused the trails, um, there is some urgency to the need to restrict motor vehicles at this site. We have voted to arrange for the entrance to be partially blocked by a boulder. The easiest and least expensive way for this would be to have the highway department take care of it. We're looking for confirmation from the select board that the highway department can do this. Otherwise, the Conservation Commission would need to look at another way to block on our authorized vehicles. Let's put this on your agenda. Any, we need it to, blows we need my to... mind that it says clearly <laughs> that it's the Conservation Commission that can make these decisions. And she's saying no. Well, you know, you're responding to a violation. As you recall, when we first talked about this, I warned that anyone claiming to have a permit or license to harvest a mountain laurel like that 
that's irregardless. The point is that you ran into this guy with his truck on the conservation area. That's the enforcement part of it that you have to decide on tonight. Just, I, I would just recommend that you not concern yourself with what the town administrator is saying and just, uh, you know, a ask politely to have the DPW place a boulder and it shouldn't go any farther than that. There, there shouldn't even really be a discussion about this. We really. did ask, we did ask Don and they said no. Yeah. Miriam, could I ask, is the town, are they saying, do they have an issue with us posting the area closed to motor vehicle access or was the placement of the boulder that concerned them? I think it was the posting. When I spoke with Chief Burgess, she said there was no problem with posting. I asked her, can we post it? And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we, I kind of hurried to get the signs up. Yeah, uh, it, and to, I guess from where I said, I, I think the, you know, it, as you have done the research and, you know, we're trying to execute the uh, the implementation of a plan that's already been approved and so it, my only suggestion and I, you know I would want to go back and look at the the letter that you wrote but I, I think to me it's more about trying to execute the plans that have been approved than dwelling on the interaction with the person driving their truck I mean I, we know that the yeah, I guess my thought had been that from the select board who's hearing about it for the first time, they would understand the urgency of it, you know, that this is not something that that we feel like we want to spend a lot of time deliberating about. We've made a decision because there was some urgency to it. I mean, I can shorten it maybe and take out some of the dramatic details. Um, that would but, be my only thought. I, you don't, you don't reference the person. No, there. Okay. no. I think too, I think the point to that, um, the police department has recommended that in order for them to enforce it, that part of that, it should be that we have a sign that delineates that it's not appropriate behavior. Right. So we have, that was, that was part of their request too, for them to be able to enforce it. Right. We, and we've done that. So now we've posted it. The real question is, I, you know, I can't understand why putting a boulder would be not permitted. We... I don't, I don't know unless it, there, there were, cons well, although they didn't say this, but if there were concerns about having a boulder alongside Lux Pond that, you know, posed a, a threat to people, you know, driving on the road, if they were to go off and and hit that or if the highway department didn't think that they had room to place it but it doesn't sound like that was the case it was really as you said it's about the posting yeah which, i mean you could put the boulder 15 feet in right which doesn't yeah. to me that doesn't make it doesn't make sense that we can't post it to implement the management plan so i'm, I'm supportive of sending the letter you know i would my suggested revisions are just a really that. yeah thank you so do we need to make a motion and vote on this? Yes. Um, I can make those edits if there are other edits, if you want me to screen share it, or if you want to trust that I can do it um, with the feedback, we should have a motion that I should, will um, um, submit a letter to the select board. So I'd like to make a motion that the conservation committee submit the letter to the select board. Um, Second. With, with the minor edits as, as indicated. Right, any other edits that anybody else wants? Um, my one comment is you refer to the management plan that's just for those conservation areas and we would really like the authority to post that at any conservation area, any sort of, if we acquire new ones in the next, however, you know, we want to have that authority to be able to post. So maybe it, it, you could refer to the conservation commission's charge as a as a as a committee that we're we're given the authority to manage our conservation areas and that includes posting signage. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't fine with that. I mean I didn't want to get down in the weeds since it was such a clear bright line that this particular property has a management plan that empowers us. Um, right. Would it be well, okay 
just yeah. felt, I just didn't want to kind of get into a whole other topic. Yeah, we could start with these. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. Because I feel like if we don't kind of go to the select board about this, then we're, it just won't happen. I don't know that it, how it can happen. All right, thank you. So we need to vote. So um, Mary- Did, we, did we get a second? Did, I'm sorry. I will did. second it. Okay. And David? Aye. Stefan, aye. Harrington? Aye. Stephon. Aye. And Wilson? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, let's get back on track for our agenda. Um, hang on one sec. Let me move that up. Okay, so um, we have the Wendell Road utility pole site visit. I Again, I we have the RDA public meeting for next week, so I'd like to postpone talking about the site visit till we have the public meeting, if that's okay with everybody. Yes. And can I just say that um, it was hard to fit it in between everything else today <laughs> before the meeting, but I did manage to complete a uh, site visit summary and I just sent it to everyone. Um, I might have attached it to the email about this meeting, like here's all the stuff we need for this meeting, or I honestly don't, or no, probably the email that was about that particular site visit. But anyway, um, you got this and please look it over and let me know if you need any changes, any edits. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to new items and updates. Um, the locks pond culvert replacement. Um, I just learned that they are not going to be doing the construction this fall. They're delaying it till the spring, uh, because of, um, supply chain problems and they still haven't got the utility poles moved. So they will have to come back to us to get the schedule, the construction schedule extended. So they'll probably be reaching out to us, I think, um, sometime to do that. Um, let's move to Joe Salvador, 31 Lakeview Road. Um, so I think since the last meeting, we had a site visit and then Joe has sent us a, um, a, a document with photographs of some of the repairs he's done. So let me let me try to pull that up with 31. I hope I have it somewhere where I can do it. Yes, I do. Should I screen share this these pictures from Joe? Sure. Helpful. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Give me one sec. All right, Joe, do you want to talk to us a little bit? Are you there? Yeah, uh, yes, I'm here. My dog barks. He's not feeling good. Well, bear with it. That's all. So, um, I'm trying to anywhere, see. Yeah, anywhere there was dirt showing, I covered with straw and put new wattles around the whole property. I put bales of straw around all around the foundation, front, back, sides, top. Um, you can see them, everything was containment. You put a lot of bales of hay in. I put a lot of bales of straw. Good. straw. I mean, sorry, the right straw. Um, the part you see in the middle, that's actually concrete. So that ain't gonna go too far. <laughs> okay, um, any questions? Anything anybody wanna? Well, one other thing I do, I did hire a meeting with a consultant tomorrow on the property mm -hmm. to do all the rest of the, the paperwork and all the stuff. The guy's name is, he's out of Athol. Let's see if I get his name correctly. Chris uh, Stodard. He's an environmental consultant too. I thought that would help out. Okay. So um, I'm going to pull up now the um, 
just so we just so we can refresh our memories, I'm going to pull up the conditions from the enforcement order. If I can find them, just so we can refer back. I have them up, but uh, here we go. So I think what we want to figure out for tonight, whether we feel Joe satisfied the, the uh, condition number one of the mitigation requirements, which was that he would submit a planting and restoration plan. I, I don't know that we have a planting plan from you, Joe. Well, I gave you a copy with the drawing with all the numbers where all the plants are going. I handed it to you when I saw you that day and you took it. Okay. And it shows where all the plants are going and what plants are there already and uh, where the existing plants are gonna go. Okay, that, I may have, uh, was that your only copy? <laughs> um, I can make more of them. I think that's the only copy I had with me when I went there and um, I can make more of them. I am not, I don't know what happened to it. I don't have it. Um, All right, but I can get you, I can send you another copy, but I sent you, helpful. and I don't know how to send it to you even here, but because yeah. my wife, she's the one who draws everything in. So I think you had indicated the plants that you had planted so far, I guess right. for the other commissioners, are there more kind of plants and details that you think you might want besides what we saw on the site? Yeah, There's some of them, some of them that I'm going to plant on a hill, I can't do them right now because the hill is growing. I don't want to disturb it, but I already actually have some already growing. I just picked up some more today to plant when it gets a little bit, um, the ground's a little bit more, I should say tighter, but I've been putting them in my garden so I can retransplant them because as the ladies that I'm working with give me different plants, but they're on that paperwork I gave you. Okay. I think we were hoping that you would be able to do some reseeding. Um, I did that. I also did that when I put the straw down. Oh, okay. I reseeded everything with okay, the con great. with the conservation seed, which I sent. I also gave you a, a picture of that. The Remember, you gave me a picture of that. So yeah. The conservation seed is underneath all the places that you see straw with dirt. Also has seed under it too. Okay. So commissioners, um, do you have any questions? Do you feel like um, satisfied with the mitigation efforts at this point? I, I don't have any questions and I do feel satisfied. It looks like I really appreciate the attentiveness, um, all, you know, all the straw and extra work that's gone into securing the site. So I, I have no concerns. I would agree. Yeah. I, I agree too. I think, um, I, and I appreciate all the work that he's done to uh, be in compliance. Great. I so um, I don't know that we. I suppose we should make a motion um, to say that we have um, found you to be, you know, with, that we've approved these mitigation efforts that you've um, complied with them. So, um, would somebody like to make a motion? What about the uh, planting plan? Are you going to exclude that from the approval um, at this well, point? Well, he did give it to us. I've lost it, so mm -hmm. but I do recall I'll, it. So he'll. I, give I will give. I'll, I'll get you another one because I'm going to be dropping more paperwork off for the other, the next project. So right. I'll, I'll stop and I'll get a hold of you or send it to you. Okay. Um, I'll find a way of getting it to you, so you'll have it. Do you want? I mean, we could wait till November 11th to look it over if you feel like you want to see the planting plan. We certainly can also say that we feel like the other the other components are satisfactory. I think I think we need to make a motion to say that that he's he has brought the property into compliance with our mitigation requirements. I would second that. Okay. So David, <laughs> David, I'm sorry, Mary. Yeah. Did you say I? Aye. Okay. Devon, aye. 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 Harrington. Aye. Han. Aye. Wilson. I don't know if we've lost Beth. Is she here? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> all right, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for all the hard work you've done. Well, uh, thank you for the guidance from everybody. So I appreciate that. So now your next step is that. Um, you have to submit a notice of intent and you have an environmental consultant who's gonna 
kind of walk you through the steps that you need to take. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it to him now to do everything for the next step. So when right. you get it, it'll be, it'll be professional by him. So. I think that's a great idea. I think that's really. That's so again, I'm going to meet with him tomorrow and go from there. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me get back to my friend. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, guys, I got to find my agenda. It just disappeared on me. Okay. So we've got that resolved. Um, should we talk about, I don't know how much we can talk about it, but this, I can give you another update from Ellen Waldinger. I spoke with her right before the meeting about 27 January Hills Road. Um, so Mary, you weren't at the site visit. Um, I think everybody else was. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at the site plans. We were generally agreeing that the original 1994 site plan really kind of describes generally how the driveway was constructed, um, but, the, but it does not cover the septic system in the house. And there's a 1997 site plan that accurately or mostly accurately describes and reflects what the house design and septic design are. So there's no one plan that kind of captures all of it, but there are these two components. Um, I, Ellen Waldinger is very eager to be able to get the, the other piece, Mary, is that we found one of the culverts that we couldn't find before. And it was under dirt and debris and was crushed. Um, and then we found, you know, as you saw when you came out there with me, a lot of soil disturbance along that. Um, is it the western side? Of, let me think about where south yeah. are. The western side of the driveway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to. I so there. <sighs> So the, the landowner really wants to get her house refinanced and it's gonna be very costly for her um, if she can't get it refinanced. Um, I don't know how to handle the certificate of compliance request because it was done improperly. It doesn't have her name on it. It was filled out by her attorney. So he's, he put his name and address where it says landowner. <laughs> And he said no to the question on the um, request form about whether or not there were any engineer stamped designs, which is not true. There are engineered designs, they just are confused. Um, I emailed Mark Stinson asking him, what do we do? Do we just deny it? Do we determine that it's invalid because it was filled out improperly. I don't know how to handle that request. I know we can't grant the request because it wasn't filled out properly. Um, Janice, do you have a sense about that? This is form 8A. Hi, sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I think why can't they just submit a corrected version so you have the information correct? The do lawyer they should to be able to draw the original one, or we just ignore it, or do we have to say we're denying it? Just a letter saying we we're denying it because it was incorrectly filled out. I, mean, I feel like we have to do something to respond to it, don't we? I would just have them substitute a corrected version. Okay. They've they filed with the commission, but they just don't have the information, you know, filled out correctly. So they're in the system and just make them correct the form. So we do not issue the 8B and deny it, is what you're saying, or we do issue not it. Not just on the basis of um, them having the applicant's name in the wrong place and stuff like that. That concern is more like, did they, did they follow the approved plan for those areas that are within wetland or buffer zone? Okay, so, all right. Um, the other issue, there are more issues, is that there's a file number on the deed, a DEP file number, but then there's a superseding file number for another notice of attempt from 2003 with different file number, and it doesn't look like they ever went and changed how what was attached to the deed. Now, 
that means there's two notices, two orders of condition that are attached to the deed because orders of condition are always attached to the deed, right? Yes, right. but the superseding one isn't your jurisdiction. That's a DEP one. Well, I'm, I guess I'm using the word superseding, meaning it's second, not- Oh, okay. I'm, I know that's a term. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is that there's two different notices of, two different, there were two different notices of intent. One was in 2003 to repair the culvert behind the house. And there were orders of conditions for that. So I'm thinking she probably wants a certificate of, comp of, of, of compliance for both of those. Yes. So right. she needs to submit two, request right yeah okay what one of my questions for the commission is because i'm trying to figure out how can we do this in the easiest way that gets to the best end result <laughs> and so the question is could we entertain a certificate of compliance based on these combined maps provided that she got an engineer to sign off on them and then issue an enforcement order around the work on the driveway as a separate issue and require remediation or mitigation as a separate issue, separate from this certificate of compliance. Then it would, it would make it a little cleaner in that she wouldn't have to spend months getting the, um, the driveway re-engineered and we still could require follow-up because we're doing it as an enforcement order. Oof. Are you I, thinking of doing I'm the sorry. enforcement against, um, are you thinking of doing the enforcement to the owner or to the contractor? Uh, probably it'd be against the owner. Hmm. I don't know how, what else to do. I mean, you could do it jointly, but really the, the mitigation that would be asking for would be something that the landowner would have to deal with. Because if, you know, we're asking her to create some more appropriate stormwater management on the driveway. I was gonna say, I, I like the idea of decoupling these things. Um, I, it seems this is already quite complicated enough and then, Layering on, you know, we have trying to make sense of work that's taking place and communication that's taking place over 20 years ago. Right. I think trying to get that, I like the idea of combining the two engineering plans the best we can, trying to put that issue to bed so that they can move forward with their refinancing. And then, you know, dealing with any work that's been done here that we are concerned with as a separate issue makes complete sense to me. Yeah, I, I agree with Scott. It makes the most sense. You know, um, you're, you're issuing your order, your, your compliance with the previous issues, not the current driveway issue. Right. Well, is the current driveway issue the culvert that was the 2003 order of conditions? No, no. Okay, good. Okay. No, it was a, it's in the buffer. There is a area of the driveway um, that is in buffer zone and they've just kind of plowed a huge amount of gravel into the buffer zone off the driveway, creating this kind of slope of gravel and in the process, they crushed a culvert that they didn't see that was under debris. Ah. So there's a rock, and maybe it was already crushed from snow plowing and God knows what. Um, so that, and there's another culvert that we came and find that's probably buried. Um, <laughs> the, you know, there, it, the original designs had three culverts, we found two of them. <laughs> that's what happens after 30 years, right? So um, what do other people think, I, Beth? Yeah, I, I agree that um, it just, I think it'll just work out better if we separate the two things. You know, I kind of get that the, the driveway right now isn't built the way that the plan says really because of, but it's but the damage has happened more recently with a different event you know i think originally it was built to plan 
and the event that's happened is much more recent. And I just think it would be cleaner and easier to, to separate the two. Things. Yeah, it has. I mean, it's possible, you know, that over time it looked a lot. It may have originally never been quite what they said it was going to be, but it was may have been a lot closer to that reality or that hypothetical. But now it's it's um, it's there's new problems with it. I, I, I just think that that is a separate issue. Um, and I think the landowner does want to fix the driveway and do it the right way. Yes. She recognizes it's a problem. She's very eager to fix it. And I think she's upset to discover that, you know, you know, she hired a contractor and they kind of made a, a bigger mess of things. Um, right. So I, I have sympathy for her that she, she didn't want this to be the outcome. So, um, Oh, I agree too with the combining them and then dealing with it as a separate issue. Okay. To try to, to, try to simplify yeah. this. So that would mean that we try to wrap this up for our, um, our November 11th meeting. So I think that she, if I think that that might work for her and then um, we can vote on the uh, enforcement order then. Do you wanna do it at that point? Sure. Or do you want to, you, you know, I, I have not had a chance to draft an enforcement order, so I can draft one for the next meeting unless somebody else wants to do it. I'm open for volunteers. You do such a good job at it now. Yeah, I know, but this one's complicated. I mean, you know, I think that we need to say that we want, I'll do a draft. I think that we want her to have an effective stormwater system that addresses the water runoff at that spot where right, right. now there's been disturbed mm -hmm. soils. And we want her to stabilize those disturbed soils for the winter until she can get something developed. And Absolutely. Would she have to come back to us then for an RDA for that um, stormwater system? No, you can do that. If you're doing an enforcement order, then that can be the, um, the uh, approval basically to get that work done, but she should provide you with a plan or something of what they're going to do before they do it. Just yeah. to make sure it's do they're doing what you want. Okay, um, I will do draft that and come up with something for next time. Can I ask the commission to consider coming up with a form letter notifying subcontractors of when they're in a wetland area that they have to tell their clients that they need to file an RDA. It, 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 this issue just keeps coming up over and over again. It seems right. like this would be an appropriate time for you guys to come together and just write a very basic letter that you can mail to someone like Mr. Adair to inform him that it's his responsibility to tell his clients when they should file. I mean, the same letter should go out to uh, Mr. Clark. You know, there, there's, and I'm sure this is gonna occur again, over yep. and over again. And, and yep. I, I agree. Um, would somebody like to volunteer to draft the letter? I'm, I'm wondering, Maybe that I think some of this maybe could use some more discussion. And I'm thinking about, you know, there are, you know, are, is there a way that the commission that we could streamline the process for when people know when they have to, you know, file, you know, the types of work that they're undertaking, the locations of, um, you know, where, how close to a, jurisdictional wetland they would be. And I'm thinking about the work that maybe we could do as a commission to make that easier for, you know, for landowners and for contractors to, to know, and maybe take some workload off of us to, you know, we, we do some site visits that, you know, for work that, um, you know, is, is not very likely to impact wetland. Um, there, we, there is that flyer that uh, is on your, web page 
we do have a we do have a um a tab on our webpage scott yeah. that says when to call the commission or when to contact the commission and then it has pretty detailed information and then we have a whole chart we developed last spring for the lake area um that has very specific information about buffer zones and and the, i guess what i'm suggesting is because it sounds like we want to reach out to contractors to take that one step further to say when you're doing this other additional types of work in these areas you need to be advised to contact us and i was just wondering um I, i'd be happy to be a part of that working with someone to to see if there's a way to make that easier or to streamline it i to me it's more than a letter but well i think that um there are some repeat offenders um people who do a lot of work in shootsbury and um you know it's in their best interest sometimes to um not bring it up because it's going to slow down the scheduling for work um so i do think there needs to be and i'm not sure where it falls in but something that would trigger a notice to those people that they also are responsible for being in compliance with all of the rules too. Yeah, because I mean, especially if there's going to be an, if we're issuing an enforce, I mean, I think if we're issuing an enforcement order on a landowner and there was a contractor involved, I think sending a letter to the contractor, letting them know that, you know, we could pursue enforcement with them. Maybe they don't realize that, that they could also be subject to an enforcement order. So, um, well, not just an enforcement order. As I read that literature you sent, also there's opportunity for fines if they're not following the correct procedures. Yeah. Um, but I do I, think, I, and maybe we need to put suggesting this. that maybe you should have this as a topic at your next meeting. Yeah, but, that's what I was just going to say. Maybe yeah. we should put this down yeah. so we can specifically talk about it and what we'd like to see in it. Yeah, uh, and maybe if we were going to send something to people, we might attach a copy of the brochure, for example, and direct them to our website. And, you know, generally, I think the language would be just kind of like, when in doubt, can communicate with us rather than just not addressing it. Um, we should probably all take a look at the website, too, and see if that doesn't need to be tweaked a little bit, too. Okay, yeah, I'd encourage you all to take a look at it. Um, Tessa had put it together. And updated it last spring, so um, it may it might benefit from um, some new looks at it. Um, let's move on. Um, I had a couple of, an item I wanted to talk about. Um, we've talked about the South Brook. We need to approve the Sumner Mountain Road monitoring visit report. Um, and I sent out last years and the years before for comparison. Have it, people had a chance to look at it? I didn't see I, any significant changes. Yeah. No. I, just, I, I looked at it. And it seemed complete and I didn't have any questions on it. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay. Um, motion? Would make a motion? I move to accept the monitoring report that was submitted to the commission. Second. I second. Okay, David. Aye. Defont, aye. Harrington. Aye. Khan. Aye. Wilson. <laughs> aye. So the next thing we, I don't think we have anything we can do about it right now around the Pelham Hill Road parcel that's up for sale, except that Jeff, Lacey has arranged a site visit for Saturday. I think it's Saturday the 6th. Uh, is that right? November 6th, I think, I think so. at 11 o'clock. Um, I can email everybody with where the meetup spot was, will be. Um, who might be interested in going to that? I'm going to go. I would be. I'm going to go. I will. Great. Get to see some piece of land. Hope there's <laughs> trails. I don't know if there are any trails. Might be mm -hmm. bushwhacking. <laughs> um, okay. Um, the other issue that I oh, want. Hold, to hold on a second. 
I, I guess I'm concerned about that that land you're going to acquire that you, yes. you're feeling to acquire. Could you just you know, say we, yourself? Uh, Nick Yarmack, 18 Wyola Drive. Yeah. You know, we, we have one of the high, highest tax rates in the state. Our assessments are going up. We have no commercial base. Why do we want to acquire some, some land with buildable lots and take that land off the tax rolls? Because it's land that's at the top of a watershed and it's property that needs to be protected from development. But hey, that's just my opinion. But it's not like any money's being spent. It's just a discussion and looking at the property. And then the money that would be drawn from isn't even in the town budget. It's in the Conservation Commission's budget. So it wouldn't affect your taxes. It wouldn't affect anything unless you're suggesting that we should continue to build on top of the top of watersheds just to increase our tax base in town. I don't think that's a very smart idea. I wasn't aware it was on top of a water watershed. I, yeah. So I apologize for that. I'm just, I'm just concerned about taking land off the tax rolls. Yeah. Gen um, in general. Well, um, how this land could be purchased is really like open for discussion. And it's not really clear where the funds would come from. There are a lot of different funding op options. I know that there is um, a land trust that's considering it as well um, that might have its own sources of funding. Um, the Conservation Commission has some funds available. I know that um, Jeff Lacey is considering um, applying to uh, the CPC, the Community Preservation Committee, possibly for CPA funds. So um, we, I, I don't think we're at that point. I think we just want to look at it and see if we think it's a um, an interesting piece of land that might be of interest for okay, do, do these acquisitions, do they have to go to town meeting or, or uh, you're, you're just pulling funds from other, other areas? Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. It depends on who's buying it. And I don't know who's going to be buying it at this point. Like okay. if a land trust buys it, then that doesn't go to town meeting. Okay, thank you. So I don't know, I, I guess. But um, stay tuned. There, uh, there'll be more information to come on that before anybody does anything. Yeah. Great, thanks. I, I have a, a new um, item for the agenda that I wanted to bring up and introduce. And um, there's a couple action steps related to it. I, um, in my ample free time last night, went to a public hearing for the Amherst Conservation Commission for the Spitsbury Road AMP solar project because they have a notice of intent before the, their Conservation Commission. So Maria was there and Andrew Chabot and, um, I was really kind of concerned after that evening um, about how these notices of intent, if they get submitted, are going to impact our commission. Um, and one of the things that was very impressive to me was the expertise on the Amherst Conservation Commission, not to, not to diss any of us, because we have a lot of expertise too, but, but they have an agent. <laughs> <laughs> which we don't have, which I'm, you know, I was envious about because <laughs> I'd like, I wish we had an agent, um, but they had done their research and they were really on it in a very thoughtful way around asking for certain things. And there were some stuff that I saw that it made me think, you know, these are the kinds of things that I could imagine us wanting right out of the gate for any notice of intent. And rather than waiting and um, you know, and then having to have a back and forth with the applicant about whether or not they're willing to do it. Um, I wonder about developing a policy with some of these requirements. I have a list, I took notes last night about some of the things that they were asking for. And I'm assuming that if any notices of intent get submitted to us, that they'll probably go about it in pretty much the same way that they did in putting that packet together. So we could probably expect the same kind of issues to come up. Um, and so I was just wondering about what the commission thought about having a discussion, putting it on agenda, maybe us doing some research and maybe coming up with some things that we would wanna communicate in advance saying, 
these are things that we are would be looking to see in the packet um, just like we developed some policies around the ANRAD submissions um, just to make sure we all get on the same page yeah i think that's a great idea and i think taking what happened in amherst as an example and just going from there and adding to it i think that's great yeah i mean one of the things i just to give you an example i don't want to take all the time tonight but um they did not do any soils testing to ground proof where they were citing their um stormwater detention basins and they were just relying on the soils mapping and so they didn't determine what the depth to groundwater was or the depth to bedrock and this was a big issue with the wheel tract solar project permitting process because they also didn't do the soils testing at first and then after a long drawn out process they finally did do the soils testing but they didn't test one area and that is the area where there's a basin right now that is full of water yep. and we'll never know if it was because the soils were waterlogged to begin with or not because we're not going to dig up the basin and do an experiment to figure that out but if there had been the proper soils testing um that would have been known from the onset and that's a pretty standard process um I and mean, that's just one example that I was thinking about that you know tell you making sure that they have an appropriate engineer doing that kind of soils testing would they be willing to uh share what their questions were um, well, I've written them all down. <laughs> oh, so, so all I right. If, you, if, you've already done, if you've already done I, that. Then. I was taking notes. Beth, do you have connections with uh, the Amherst ComCon? Maybe, um, maybe they could visit your ComCon meeting and talk to you about what they see as some of the issues that uh, came up that night. Well, Mir Miriam was at the meeting last night, and so she, she told oh, Miriam codes are really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, and I'm going to go to the next one, and um, you know, I it'll be interesting. I'm, I it would be interesting to look at what their peer reviewer has said to see the peer review report because that would be a public record. Maybe we can find out some way to see it just to just get an idea heads up because I feel like you know we're going to have to. If they submit them, they won't submit them all at once, but they might submit one a month. Um, and then we're gonna be really, really busy. Um, Cause there's at least two or three of those sites that I think would end up having to be a notice of intent before us. So um, and that's kind of what freaks me out a little bit. So, um, and then the, you know, just like setting some standards about what kind of maps we want. And I, I was looking at, I took it, I look at the, the notice of intent that was submitted to Amherst and I saw some maps that weren't there that I would have liked to have seen so I I'll make a list and send it to everybody and then we can put it on the agenda and what I also wanted to see if you're interested is I have a few documents I can send you about storm water management um, you know the mass dp storm water manual and a couple of other documents and I can just just so people can kind of familiarize themselves with these things I know it's it's heavy reading, but if we end up having NOIs, we're gonna to have to address those issues. I would like to have them just to look at, if not now, then in the future, I'll just save them to my CONCOM folder to be able to find later. Yeah. I mean, one of the so things- is that, that, a, is that an open meeting that it is. benefit that more people could, could attend and we could just all listen, attend. Just we listen all to the attend. conversations if they wanted to. I, I think that would be a fabulous idea. I don't know what the next meeting is in a couple of weeks. I, I would really I recommend that you go because it'll give you an idea of what some of the challenges are. And there, I have to say there was some real friction last night between Maria and what I perceived as friction between Maria and the Conservation Commission because they were asking for some things and there was there was some pushback around it and that's what was putting a red flag for me of like well how can we be proactive so that we don't have to have a re a repeat of that so we don't have to have that same argument about well we want this and you don't want to give it to us and we want this but we didn't do it and 
you don't think you should do it. I mean, you know, I, we could. I, I think it'll be good too to watch what happens in Amherst with some of the residents when they start when there's public comment and um, just how the ConCom deals deals with that too because that causes a lot of stress and causes. So, and, and we may get that, we'll probably get that with our applications too. Yes. Yeah, yeah that piece, funny. that that knowing how vocal our residents are, I do worry about that becoming overwhelming. Here. Well, they were putting a time limit and um, you, people couldn't talk for more than two minutes and they were timing them and they only devoted half an hour to public comment. So basically they said, if you didn't get to comment, you can comment at the next hearing. Um, but that they put a cap on it. There might have been more people who wanted to talk than got a chance to. Right. Um, because you know, there's other business that we're gonna have to do, and we're not gonna be able to just have a two and a half hour meeting mm -hmm. and, and not deal with all the other business that we have to take care of. Does it look like we will have an agent anytime soon? Like hopefully before any of those NOIs come in? We have an interview set up tomorrow with another applicant um who looks really interesting and um i'm forgetting if it's a man or a woman i don't i think it's a woman um so maybe we will um but they wouldn't be an agent they're just a clerk so um you know <coughs> we're not posting for people with wetland science or regulatory experience so uh, we're not getting applicants who are going to be able to hit the ground running on this stuff. It's a lot to ask of a board like ours. It's a lot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. For a volunteer board, I have to say. Um, I know that with the planning board, they're talking about hiring a project manager who would manage the projects for the planning board um just on a short-term basis and i have to say that in some ways that sounds very appealing to me <laughs> um but i don't know that I, mean, I imagine the idea is that they would hire one and have the applicant pay for it okay i will um i will put something together and send it out to you guys um let me just see are there any other items we're missing oh i know another issue wanted to talk about briefly was um how we're filling out site visit forms um so i'm just noticing a couple of things about how we're doing the site visit forms and one is that i think that the way i understood it from the trainings i went to with um macc is the idea on a site visit form is that you're documenting what resource areas you're identifying and whether the project is in the buffer zone or not so it seems like that's something we need to pay attention to in documenting on the form, you know, saying mm -hmm. if there is a resource area, what kind of resource area um, is the project in a buffer zone? Is it not? Is it in, a, in actually in the resource area? Things like that. Um, whether the site conforms with the plans we were given, whether they're substantially different or not. And, um, and then I, I think that you can put down concerns if you have concerns, if you're concerned, if you see erosion or you see a problem, you can document and say on the form what the problem is. I think you're not supposed to say what decision you think the Conservation Commission should arrive at. So I don't think you can say approve RDA, for example, or, or approve building permit. <laughs> what do you think I okay don't when i first joined the commission which was not that long ago yeah, I'm and i had other people helping me the first few you know going over doing these for the first time and i was like what do i put here and they go you know find the building permit uh issue the rda and so if you look at any of the past ones i did that's what it says in the recommendations because that's what i was told to put so no, I, I i know that's been our culture i just my concern is that it looks like a deliberation okay and then when by sending it to the rest of the commission it becomes an open meeting law violation 
Okay. <laughs> so really that's the well, I didn't realize that. I was doing what I was told at the time. <laughs> All right, what do you think, Janice? Or Beth? I I think you're right um that you shouldn't put a decision or a recommendation in, but you can list concerns. Right. Or you can say everything looks okay. Perhaps you can go that far. I don't know. But... No concerns observed. Yeah, something like no that. No concerns. And then we'll we'll figure it out that that means we can approve the building permit. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah, you should be careful and not making it um, sound like you're recommending a decision, like you said, and then passing it around to everybody. Right. Okay. Also, like, and I, I know this came up with Scott was, you know, don't, um, what, I think that, you know, for when we went out on that enforcement site visit, we had made it really clear we weren't going to give the applicant advice about what was sufficient or what he needed to do. And, and then I think we kind of, you know, it, that got a little squishy. Um, but I think again, sort of like, um, if, if it's going to be that the commission's going to make a recommendation, we shouldn't be like uh, preempting that on the site visit form. Mm -hmm. So just a thought, I don't know how, you know, I don't want to be picky about it. I just was concerned about, um, right. you know, if, if, for example, you say everything's okay on the site visit form and then it's an enforcement order and other people don't agree, you know, is that creating a confusing paper trail because uh, it looks like they were given approval at the site visit. Um, right. And people often want approval at site visits. So I get that. Okay. Um, I think to, to add to that, and I know I've talked to you about it before, you know, given how many of these places that we've been looking at that aren't following through on what recommendations they have been given when they start the project. You know, I do think when we write things, we need to set up some standard for either they provide to us periodic reports as to where their, um, where their project is at, or that we put intermittent visits to the project to make sure that you know, the, the recommendations are still in place. I think we're finding people start off well, but, you know, I think what's this, the third, the third project, fourth project probably that we've looked at that they're not complying as they go along um, with our recommendations, you know, so. I'm, yeah, I, um, what I'm seeing, I agree with you. I, one of the things I was also thinking about as a condition is that putting in an expectation that people have to maintain their erosion control systems. You know, that if we are permitting the construction of an erosion control, let's say a stormwater system, like a culvert or something, that you know, people have a responsibility to maintain it. And it might be that it just dawned on me since we were talking about videos and pictures, you know, maybe they're required to submit pictures every so many weeks that the, the, the things are still in place. You know, I mean, I don't want to create a million more site visits for us, but is there a way that through the process they have to provide the, the, the proof that it's still there? Sounds yeah. like a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think if we were to, for example, tell put it as a condition that people have to maintain, especially for like um, for a notice of intent for order of conditions, if we say you have to maintain the structure so it's functioning, then when we go in to do a certificate of compliance, like with this particular one we were just looking at today, um, we could say, hey, the order, you know, condition number three was that you had to maintain it so it works and it's not maintained, so it's not working. So that's an enforcement issue. So I feel like um, it would just make it easier to have that conversation later. That is that is one of the standard conditions in the um, order of conditions. The one of the state standard conditions is to maintain erosion control. But I think we should add it to our. Um, you know, maybe I don't. Have we ever developed? Has Sheetsbury ever developed the um, sort of a standard set of conditions that goes with almost every order of conditions? And then you know, you we do, and we just started that last year, and it's it's a work in progress. 
Yeah, so we should add one that just goes that with all of them, that's a standard condition that erosion control needs to be maintained and we can be more specific in the- and, some, and something about how they provide proof of that throughout the process. And I guess that's my, you can, you can put it in, but how do you know they're doing it, right. you know? Yeah. Well, we're always able to do a site visit. We have the authority. Um, and, and yeah. one more comment. Um, with these larger projects, for example, if one of these solars, solar NOIs gets submitted, one condition is to require the applicant to, to have an environmental monitor and the applicant has to pay. And that's a, a, a consultant who does all the monitoring during construction for us and sends uh, reports to us with photos and updates and, and makes sure that the erosion control um, stays in good shape. And that's very common for larger projects, at least it was in Amherst. I'm sure they're going to do it for that solar project that's mm -hmm. coming through. So it's, it's something you require of the applicant as a condition. Absolutely. They didn't do that with the wheel attract. Um, hmm. But the CONCOM didn't have any jurisdiction. It was all outside of the buffer zone. So uh, it was the planning board that didn't require it. But um, we should. We should. You see, those are, you know, so I, I think I like the idea of beginning to think about conditions, our standard set of conditions. And then, you know, um, one of the things that I've started researching, just to, you know, is I've been looking around the state on websites, finding orders of conditions for solar projects <laughs> from conservation commissions, just to see, you know, what, what are people doing out there? Um, that just, you know, so I have a, a, a folder of them that on my uh, computer. So we don't hopefully try to minimize reinventing the wheel. Sounds um, great. I will circulate the um, standard conditions that we have. It's not a lot. And I think they could be improved on. And so maybe we can as to talking about the NOIs, we can also talk about what our standard conditions are because we've got a couple of RDAs coming up and, um, you know, I think that we're seeing what, what some of the areas are that we want to beef them up. Yes, I agree. That's, that would be good. All right. Um, so we have a meeting on the 11th and we have two public meetings. We, at 7.30, we have Wendell Road Utility Pole Project and then 7.45 is... 24 Lake Drive, uh, paving driveway. So um, I don't think we have any other business tonight, do we? Just looking. So I guess, so, so the question was that, so we do know that that meeting is, as Don pointed out, is Veterans Day, but the second meeting that would have occurred in November is actually on Thanksgiving. Do we wanna go ahead and set up a, a different meeting? Um, we don't have, I, I don't know that we would have any public meetings for the second meeting. Um, we've got continued public hearing for Montague Carver for uh, the first meeting in December, whether it was at the 10th or the 9th. Um, I guess my question is maybe we should wait and see if we get any other RDAs coming in. Um, yeah, I would agree with that because it seemed when we were rescheduling some of these other things, we did it based on the fact that we have one meeting a month in November, December, January, February. And so we were scheduling things for those um, first Thursdays. Yeah. And so I would agree it would have to be sort of some kind of emergency that we had to deal with or oh my god i don't want to have the meeting go for four hours let's break it into to two well there's that <laughs> i mean if we wanted to have a like a meeting where we have a more thoughtful discussion about notices of intent orders of conditions we could set that aside as a topic for a separate shorter meeting that would be just that and yep. just you know, and then take care of our week, our monthly business at the, on the 11th. Um, I'm, I'm open to that. If people want to do that, if we want to play around with a date. 
and like I said, it, not not necessarily to do it. Just to, for me, it's easier to block it off ahead to know if we had to do something or when people are available. You know, what's a time? Right. Uh, rather than at the last minute trying to figure that out. I do think that like having the um, a discussion about some of these policy issues needs a, a block of time. Um, just looking at the calendar. So yeah, we're not gonna be on the 25th. We're meeting on the 11th. Um, I mean, I imagine people are not excited about having a meeting on the week of Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'll, I'll be gone I'm not so that's what, you guys yeah. need a break <laughs> you need a break yes um what if we were to set a meeting up um for like the week after Thanksgiving um you know like I could check to see when there's an opening but do other people have nights that they're not available? I don't have the family calendar in front of me, so I don't know off the top of my head. I don't. So the Thursday night is the second, but. Yes. And we're meeting on the ninth. And we meet on the ninth. So. Right. So the question would be whether you wanted to have two consecutive meetings and have one that's just a dedicated meeting to just talk about policy issues and not anything else. And the only pro for doing that is, you know, if something came up, nobody's going to want to meet on the 16th or the 23rd of December or even the 30th. So, you know, okay. as it gets as it gets closer to Christmas, people are going to be less likely to want to meet. If you had to double yeah. up, that's probably. All right. Well, why don't we tentatively that we do the would would everybody be able to come on the second if we did it at seven and we try to keep it to an hour? Yeah. November second. Yeah. No, December second. December. December second. Oh, oh, oh. December second. If my calendar's open, I will be there. Okay. But it's downstairs. Well, well, let me let us know if it's not if it, it doesn't work for you, Robin, and we'll maybe we can think of a different date. We can pull people. Um, I can't be here on the eleventh. November eleventh. Okay. November 11th, okay. November 11th, yes, the next meeting. All right. All right, well, um, I know the other thing I wanted to talk about it before we end about the ANRADs or about the NOAs is um, I do have some concern about our quorum situation if any of these things go on for a while. Um, and Beth, you know, I know you have to recuse yourself from the Amherst one, but have you considered rebutting your, um, you know, getting a, a real estate appraisal to rebut the um, presumed conflict of interest from Montague Carver? So Miriam, I think Mark has a question too. Just oh, I don't know if you I'm can sorry, see Mark, it on your screen. Mark, I didn't see you. Okay, go ahead. Mark, do you have a question? Um, yeah, yeah. I thought uh, one of the agenda items was the uh, LAC collaboration on storage. Oh, yes. From our management. Yes. That's I'm sorry, you you forget about it. patiently, I'm sorry. Let's finish this light agenda item and we'll get to you, Mark. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, have you thought about that? Um, I thought it was okay for Montague Carver. I thought I was outside the 300 foot. Oh, are you? Yeah. Not, okay, and it's not across the street from you either? Um. It is the whole project is across the street, but I think yeah. I'm I think I'm outside the 300 foot. I thought we looked at that. Okay, good. Okay, so that's good. Sure. All right. Okay, that that is reassuring. Okay, so then it's only the one project that you're recused from, and we can't do anything about that. Um, I I was thinking to myself that it was both projects, and that started feeling like a lot of um, burden on everybody else to not ever miss uh, a public hearing. Um, we could consider getting an, um, an associate member, commissioner, who could vote. There is such a thing in state law. Specifically on those projects. What? You're talking specifically on those projects. I don't think it, uh, for, um, I think for 
an associate, it's not just specific to a project. I think, you know, commissions can have associates. I oh. haven't, looked, I haven't gone and looked up what the got regulation is about who appoints them. Um, Don't we have an associate commissioners already? Uh, um, Maybe I'm using the wrong word because we have associates, but we don't have what is what is it? Alternate. Janet, alternate thank you. Oh, alternate. Uh, alternates. I think the town has to uh, approve that in general. Have they done that for planning board or concom? Or they approved it for the planning board. They didn't approve it for. Ah. The and I think for the planning board, that that's where my question came is that they could only work on specific projects that were identified mm -hmm. not anything not everything right right so they were appointed for a particular projects so um that would be the question whether that would be helpful to us i guess you could think about it i don't have an answer to that and then who would it be James yeah, <laughs> I don't think it could be me. I don't think it could be me because oh, my yeah. house abuts uh, Cole's land. So I, I think that'd be the problem is that Janice would have to look at the one that's in my backyard and I'd have to look at the one on Montague. <laughs> uh, technically, I could look at the Carver Road one and, you know, look at the data. Just like Janice could look at the one behind my house, the Leverett one. And just look at the data. I don't. I don't know how town officials are going to accept us voting on these. Yeah. Types. Well, yeah. You guys can deliberate with us, even though you're not voting. You'd, right. Right. Yeah. And we were. And we were talking voting mostly. If, if we didn't have a quorum, what would we do? Yeah. Right. What what would what would we I, what would happen with an NOI if all of a sudden somebody was ill and it turned out you didn't have a quorum of four of three commissioners available? So nobody's allowed to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, Janice? What or what? No, I don't. I, I don't know what happens then. It um, might be something to find out too. To because I would worry if we didn't have a quorum and then it went ahead and they got approved simply because of timing, like we were talking. Yeah, no. Okay. All right. Let's move on to a happier topics. Um, stormwater <laughs> with, <laughs> with the lake. Mark, uh, Mark, do you want to join us now? <laughs> I'm sorry it's taking you so, uh, so long. Uh, not a problem. Yeah, I just forwarded to you, Mark, a grant that came in to the, our inbox. Did you see that? Yep, I did. Have you guys made any headway in thinking about next steps? Yeah, you know, here's, here's our problem, is that none of us have any expertise, none of us on LRAC have yeah. any expertise in this area. Um, you know, and so we're really just you know, swinging a bat in the dark. Um, and that's why we were hoping that the town would form a committee with people who had some expertise, and that didn't happen. And um, uh, you know, so uh, my guess is uh, Mary has uh, several of you to kind of help out, or at least you know, provide us some guidance in which direction to go in. Uh, does that seem accurate? I'm sorry, you were breaking up. I couldn't quite hear oh, the last no. part. So, uh, so the question is, is, uh, is we are hoping that, that the CONCOM could provide uh, some guidance. So many, you know, several people on your committee have expertise in grant writing and where to, where to get funds. Uh, is that still on the table? Yeah, I think that we talked about trying to do it within the context of our regular meetings, putting it on as an agenda item rather than a separate working group. Can, can I add that um, uh, I just ended my contract with DCR and I'm told that from my supervisors, there's no conflict of interest if I am offering you advice. 
in what grants to apply for, how to apply for them, what needs to be written. Um, I have a bit of a background writing wildlife habitat improvement grants. Um, so I, I feel confident that I could advise you probably through a DER or a DEP grant proposal. Um, and I could certainly liaison. Don, Don, what is DER? Uh, De Department of Environmental Research. something. Restoration? Know. Restoration, yeah. Um, they Every year they advertise a bunch of grants and they, they typically all end up going to the cranberry bogs out on the Cape because nobody out here applies for them. But during the last storm events this summer, DEP and DER offered grants to deal with washouts and roads. So that immediately made me think of Wyola. Yeah. Um, there was also this grant that came through um, that I forwarded to you, Mark, um, that was a climate resilience kind of um, grant through FEMA. This one you just sent? Yeah, it was, um, that was through FEMA. It was a uh, hazard mitigation funding opportunity for uh, flood risk reduction projects. Which okay, said, can, I ask a couple of questions? can I ask a couple of questions? Yeah. Um, what's the, pro in, your, in all of your experience, what's the possibility or probability of us applying for funding and actually getting something? Well, it depends on how good the grant writer is to some extent, I guess, but. That's exactly, you know, I mean, you can write grants very broadly and then, you know, you don't get considered, but you're not writing a very broad grant. You're, you're writing for expertise help in engineering a solution to erosion on the roads. I mean, that's pretty specific. Uh, and I, I could see where you would have a really good chance at getting a DEP grant. Well, you also already have this rough bones report. And I think that writing a grant that's very focused saying, listen, we have this 2007 storm, was it 2007 stormwater report, but it's, it isn't an engineering plan. You know, it's, it's um, conceptual. It's not really a, an actionable design plan and you need to have a planning grant um, so that you can then get funds to construct stuff. Uh, one good grant program for that exact kind of thing is a 604B, which is Mass DEP, EPA joint kind of thing. And the, the 604B is really for planning. And it, all, it kind of leads you into what's called a 319 grant. And they're both considered non-point source. It's a non-point source grant program. Um, and that's exactly what, you know, stormwater really is. So that, that would be a good angle. So if you Google um, a 604B grant, Mass DEP, you'll find a lot of info on those. And those might be easier to get than the FEMA grants, the, um, the one that the hazard mitigation one, um, those are a little tougher. Yeah. Well, I think that sounds um, like the way to go, Mark. Uh, an organization like LWAC for these grants, instead of us trying to wing it. I, I couldn't hear what that. You're, you're, you're breaking that. up, Mark. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what are, uh, 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 I think you're freezing. An organization like you, uh, okay, I'm, I always have a bad connection tonight, uh, although it looks strong. Um, uh, here's another question. Uh, would you guys either, would some of you be one? <laughs> we don't know. We say yes, to yes to all of that. <laughs> well, I think what you were saying is that will would some of us be willing to help LWAC write some grants? Or, right? or would, would, so would LWAC... A different approach for what LMAC hires grants. Is that ever done? 
hire what? A consultant. Um, well, I, I think that, you know, it's, I know it may be intimidating to think about writing grants. I mean, I, Don has some experience. I have a lot of grant writing experience. I'm actually have to write a grant this weekend. So I'm not doing anything, but writing that grant this weekend for Village Neighbors. Um, one of the things I've found is that once you've written a grant, you know, there's kind of the same components to almost all the different grant applications that you see and that it's the first one that is kind of the most time consuming because you have to put together the explanation of your your project and the problem description and, um, you know, budget proposal. And then once, once you have that, you can tweak it for different other grant opportunities if you find one, because you have kind of have a template that you've created. Does anybody have um, copies of, of grants that got approved that they'd be willing to share just so when they're looking at it, they have an idea of what it, what it would look like? You know, uh, so you don't have an estimate yet from a company like Tie and Bond, an engineering company, and, you know, the kinds of things that you want to, to come out of this plan, it might be better to work backwards and approach them. They will have copies of grants that they've been participated in before that they, you know, that, that paid their, their bill. And that the, the 304, the DEP one, I, I'm almost 100% positive that a company like Tie and Bond has experience with those types of grants. So you're suggesting that's the first place we start is going to like a company like Tie and Bond? I, I think, I, I don't want to suggest who you should go to, but I would suggest that you go to at least one or two engineering companies and ask for an estimate. Okay. Yeah, you, could, you could say, give them the, the 2007 stormwater plan and say, you know, what would you be recommending as being the next step from that? You know, I just pulled up, Mark, just so you know, I just pulled up the RF, the, the application for the, um, the, uh, the DP grants, the 319 and 604B. Four B. And it's a December 15th deadline. Um, and, you had to submit written questions by November 10th. I just don't think you're going to be able to make that deadline. And the other thing is, at least when I worked for um, the FERCOG before, those went through the FERCOG. They didn't go from individuals. I don't know if that's changed, but some things are only through the planning agencies. Some are through the town. Um, it's not always possible for you know an independent um group to be able to even apply for some but if the town did it on you know on, as part of the project then some of those might work but the town generally worked with the FERCOG on the 604b and the 319s so you might check with the um, natural resource planner at the FERCOG and ask her about those grants and who's eligible to apply for them I just looked at the 319 and 604B uh, website and they yes. have summaries of projects that were funded for the last 10 years. Um, and they also have, you know, questions and answers and some other resources for stormwater planning resources. Um, so there's some great information just on that website. Um, we, sub we submitted a 319 in Amherst and I was, you know, core person on that team and, and we received it and we actually just did the work um, this fall for it. Um, and I mean, it was the municipality submitting. We didn't go through okay. a planning commission or anything like that. So I'm not sure if an organization like the Lake can, you may be right, it might have to be a municipality, but I don't remember ever huh. seeing that that was the case. But, and I can certainly provide our application. Um, Is it to, yeah. To, to look at. <laughs> that would be great. You know, yeah, that, that would be really awesome. We built a floodplain. It was very exciting. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, um, cool. I, I think that um, it's probably like, this may not be the place 
for in it, for this next fiscal year? I because I don't think you could get the application together. Maybe you could. You got a little bit of a month. No, no way. We understand. It's, 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 if I understand, it's not a this year thing. Uh, I but it's not. what? Well, I I I understand. It's definitely not a this year thing. Yeah. But you know, it might be it might be possible to do the planning piece because you've got this already a template, and what you're really wanting to do is to take that template and develop, you know, kind of more more steps to it. Um, I mean, there was some good information in that that engineering plan. Okay. There certainly were some things I think that you could easily. Um, you know, work on, you know, one of the things I, this is kind of a, a, a related question, but I, we were on a site visit with Beth and they point at 20, this was 24 Lake Drive. And so just down from your house. And there's another one of these weird storm drains that go under the road across somebody's property and, and apparently discharges into the lake. And we have no idea how many of them there are. Oh, yeah, I, think, I think you'll find a lot of those around. But they're really uh, not I think good. If you look around the lake. <laughs> they're, they're terrible. Because um, they're not really doing anything to sort of treat the sediments before they they go into the lake. I think 50 years ago, that was kind of a standard process. Yeah. Might be good just to know how many of them there are and where they are. Agreed. <laughs> I, uh, well, you guys gave me some food for thought here. I appreciate it. I, I do think, Tra I think maybe it was Tracy that was talking about going around in her kayak once the lake went down in an effort to try to identify some of those? Well, or somebody said Bill Elliott used to do that. Do you know, do you, anybody remember that? Not, not to my knowledge. No. I remember Bill testing the water and I remember him paddling around during uh, uh, drawdowns to, to look at uh, runoff pipes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. And then what did he do when he found them? He made a map. I don't know and where it is. And did he tell anybody or like get rid of the, tell people to get it rid of it? It was a board of health thing. I, I, I imagine they have it. Oh, interesting. Right. Well, that's, that could be a fun fall activity. When is the drawdown? <laughs> It's drawn down now. It's drawn down now. Are the pipes are pipes exposed? Anybody know? Can Not yet, because they just started. It'll take them a few weeks to get them down. But all right. <laughs> well, everybody feels like going out kayaking. You can borrow my kayak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, I think this is this is helpful. Yeah, so maybe we could get a look at Jan at um, a sample of Beth, how Beth Phil approached it. Um, what and, what was the other site you were just looking at? The three nineteen and what else? What was the other three nineteen? It's a state um, under financial grants financial system is sixty four B six zero four B. Okay, there's a lot of information. Um, but again, we you're kind of missing the window for that opportunity for this grant cycle. Um, would CPA funds be? Would this be an eligible for CPA funds? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. With recreation, historic, housing, and um, what was the other one? Like there's four conservation. Conservation. <laughs> conservation. Okay. I guess this doesn't quite fall under conservation. It's really more for like acquiring land for, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. 
have you communicated with the town's emergency management team committee? Uh, well, Walter, who Walter, it's, yeah, he's ILRAC, and so he's part of the are these discussions. Okay. So the answer, I think, is yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess we'll we'll put this on the agenda. I don't know which, if we'll be able if we can put it on the agenda for the eleventh to follow up with you, Mark. Yeah, I will. And um, but we'll we'll loop back with you soon. Okay, and maybe uh, maybe we can invite a few of you to come to an LWAC meeting. What is your next uh, LWAC meeting? Our meeting start. It would be the third Saturday of November of uh, November. November twentieth. That's the twentieth before Thanksgiving. That's the week before the 20th, uh, nine okay. o'clock in the morning. We, there's okay. quick meetings. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. All right, I think we are probably done for tonight. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else we need to cover? Nope. Okay, somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll My second. second. <laughs> All right, David. Hi. <laughs> Stefan, I, Harrington, I, on, I, Wilson. And I don't think we have any site visits for next week. I can't see that we do, um, but I'll let you know if it turns out we do not have any. Penny's been away, so um, I don't know if something's come in to the t our town mailbox, um, but to be continued. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Alrighty. All right. Bye bye. Yay. Bye. Thanks, Thanks. Bye bye.